Hey everybody, I'm Stryker at K-Rock with my radio partner Klein, and we are joined today by a wonderful singer, songwriter, performer, John Bellion. <laughs> yeah, What's right. up, man? Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> Thanks for coming into K-Rock. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of Thanks course. for dressing up for us, too, by the yeah, way. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> it's it's got nice only the finest, bro. Only the finest. <laughs> man, what a great role you have been on, and uh, from a distance, just watching you, you put in the work, you got the skills, and you have been doing it, and not slowing down. As you sit here today, how are you feeling mentally, physically, the whole thing? I feel good. Tour, tour is a little bit different this time around. We're able to to have a little bit more space on the bus. We have more buses, and it's more of a a patient kind of thing. It's not too. I'd be three days into tour like two years ago and be like dead. My voice is gone. So I feel energized. I feel pretty good. The early tours that you did go on in your career was it you driving a van? Was it your best friend? How did that work? It's been a slow. It's, yeah, it's definitely been a long time coming. We've been in the van for a while. It was like thirteen dudes, eleven passenger van. And then uh, then we got the bus, but it was like 17 guys on a 15-thing <laughs> bus. And now finally we have like three buses, so it's like good to, yeah. That's sure. good, man. Yeah, All right, so I was looking on your Instagram, and I'm like, oh, obviously a ton of followers, but who in the world is this dude following? I feel bad for everybody on Stranger Things not named Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. Because you're the of all the cast, she's your go-to on that. <laughs> she actually uh, <laughs> she actually mentioned me in like an interview uh, recently. She posted on her story, like somebody asked her what her favorite song was, and a record called Conversations with My Wife off of my yes. latest album. She It was like her favorite record. So I ended up, we sent some records back and forth. I think she's about to like work on some music too and stuff, so it's pretty cool. So Glory Sound Prep yep. is that record. She knew of you then. Yes. Loves that song mentions yes. you and there's the circle so she knows your music have you seen every second of all stranger things i have the last episode to go i've okay. waited on the bus I, I still haven't seen it. it's called like battle at star everybody dies seen it. everybody's dead no i'm just kidding okay. I, I, he is not I, I, one second it, it is like one of my favorite shows of all time yeah my one takeaway and this is not a spoiler alert Poor Steve, is he in concussion protocol now? I don't like, know. Like he has been knocked out for for a minute. Every episode, <laughs> he's getting knocked out and fighting somebody. Exactly. Exactly. Do you know what city you're in right now? Because I know that uh, you've been traveling, you're all over the place, and I would imagine a lot of the times you may not know where you wake up. This is L.A. right now. No, you're wrong. It's Albuquerque. In, is it? Welcome to Albuquerque. Oh man, thank you guys for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate it. You were close. This is great. I wanted to ask you because you're a guy. I think in some ways you were at the forefront of popularizing the mom's basement mentality. Yeah. This is where it all began for you, in the mom's basement. Totally. Pete Davidson now is getting all sorts of uh, press. He's back living in his mom's basement. He says it's the new, it's the new hot spot. It's new hot spot, yeah. There used to be a time people that, that was like a pathetic thing. Oh, you living in your mom's basement. Make something of yourself. Yeah. But uh, mom's basements are cool, right? I, I agree, yeah. I think I, I probably a year ago I just moved out of my parents' house. I'm, I'm 28, so it's, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm down for the parent support thing. I'm down for the whole uh, for the whole cause. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, one of the latest tracks that I've been listening uh, from you is Crop Circles. Yeah. Where did this thing come from, man? Oh, man. It was funny. Millie actually hit me up like two days after we finished the song. So I ended up like sending her the record, and she was like flipping out about it. It was cool. Um, my buddies Mark and Volta, I work with them a lot. Um, we just kind of cooked up a jam, and then I was like right before tours, so we were like, should we wait to put this on another body of work, or should we just throw it out as a Lucy? And we were kind of just like, put it out. We're in control of it, and kind of just own schedule, own whatever. So we were like, let's just release it, you know? Uh, so when we're working on K-Rock, I'll play a Jack White song, and then a Blink song. Of course. And then it's Elenium yeah. and John Bellion. Yeah, man. So is, did you think in your career you were an alternative artist, a pop artist, no genre at all? Definitely no. Even, even Glory Sound Prep is kind of like me kind of ramming it down people's throat that it's not like a bedroom producer. Anybody and their mother can work on Ableton and kind of rock that way. So I think even when Good Things Fall Apart was brought to me in its early stages with no vocalists, no anything, some of my favorite writers in the world worked on it. Uh, Jay Hart, Sarah Hudson, Jason Evigan, those are like the homies homies. And I love supporting like the writing community. So when they presented the song to me without anything on it, I was like, honestly, I feel like the next wave of everything is going to go back to a little more live approach. So hearing something that was like reminiscent of Blink like or reminiscent of like Taking Back Sunday or something to that effect, I've never done it in my career because usually I'm producing everything myself. It's more of like a digital sound. So I was super excited to hear like 
a K-Rock-esque record that was like, oh, this is new for me. I, I want to jump in on this. I never heard of Elenium in my life. Someone sent me the record, what this dude Matt Mashey, and was like, yo, this guy is like incredible. He produces his own stuff. He's, he's involved in the music. He's like just sold out the garden three nights at Red Rocks. So then I, I was like, cool. But then I listened to the record and was like, this is incredible. So I was just happy to hop on. It was, it was cool to be a And when you say you listened to the record, what were you hearing exactly early on? I was hearing a guitar like just an acoustic guitar with with the beginning with, is acoustic that's it. catchy right with, away with yeah. song and that was really it with uh, this dude Jay Hart doing the demo of the version and uh, it's just something I haven't done in my career yet I haven't like just been like a vocal feature on 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 something that's like not like a dance whatever this has like such like a 2002 feel to it like a dashboard yes. professional emotional yes, type of thing yes. and I really do feel like a lot of even today's the Post Malones and whatever they're drawing from that bank it was cool to do more of like a purist version of like something that felt like it was from that era so it was exciting to me for and sure. I feel when I listen to the song it has such a nice build to it oh for sure it grabs you in the beginning and it takes you exactly. at the end you're like oh, I'm moving a lot yeah, now like, towards like the end of the song like weird time signatures and it's getting cut off it's, it's not ending on the floor it's, it's yes. pretty cool what's cool about it is you know I said I have the hard job on our show of sitting by the text line so i get to see kind of immediate reaction from people and striker played that for the 420 you know usually when something is different sounding it, the, the initial reaction is almost always it seems like in this world negative first right then the positivity this comes. doesn't fit this doesn't fit yeah and then but it was crazy because i was telling it was like love right right away and it just kept on coming boom the, boom boom there's Who, like a spirit like a genuineness in the song that's that's it's very vulnerable and the fact that I think Elenium did a great job of kind of juxtaposing Sonics as far as like when you hear that acoustic guitar come in, but when the drop happens, it's a pretty digital big drop. And I know for even like K Rock territory, that's like a big thing to hear like super hyper digital things. But right. the way he blended the, like I said, the 2002 like Taking Back Sunday dashboard feel into it, it infused into it, it's, it sounds like something brand new. So it's, it's exciting for sure. It seems like you have total comfortability collaborating with people oh totally writing lyrics that came from your own mind and sharing them with other artists totally. has that always been easy for you to do no i think i think early on in my career it was very like i do a hundred percent of it myself i have no help i did my first three albums myself my fan base is through me i couldn't collaborate i don't want to do it I, i'd always be like no but i didn't do that and not at this point in my career it's like <laughs> i just want to meet new talent like we just started a label just signed a band called Lawrence the band they're incredible um like I need to be around people who just keep me passionate about it it used to be I don't want to go back to the catering hall I do this all myself I don't yeah. want to now it's about how do I remain passionate and happy about what I'm doing so when Jason Evigan or Jay Hart or Sarah Hudson and those type of writers they'll text me and they'll be like I get first dibs on certain records that they're like hey what do you think about this and certain times I'll send an idea back or and then other times I'll just be like yeah I'll just sing on this I think this sounds great like it's cool so it's cool to be able to like we were in San Diego just did 5,000 cap room with my own Good stuff that I'm you, writing man. and doing myself and then having access as a hit maker to write for other people and then also being able to have access to songs through my songwriter friends like A Good Things Fall Apart that keeps me relevant within a, within a radio space. I think it just opens up my business portfolio to a degree 100%. of how many things I can hit. So it's, I'm comfortable with it. I think it only it only speaks volumes that says, hey, I could do nine minute songs on my own albums. My fan my fans will show up. I could be as indulgent as I want on my stuff. Right. <laughs> but when it comes to the radio or whatever, I've written records for other people. I'm getting back into that industry. So having access in both fields, I feel like it's just just separates me even more. Most people will be like, oh, you know, you didn't write all the all of Good Things Fall Apart. It's like, no, but I get to promote my friends and promote the songwriter community because I feel like there's an uprising that's happening in producer and songwriter communities where our artists aren't able to, like, really fake the funk anymore and pretend like they're writing everything because they're not. So I'd rather just be like, I make my own stuff. I got my right. own fans. They come to my shows. Then I can get on the radio with my friend's songs and stuff like that. It's like, why not? And your track record and your credibility, you've, you've built it up. You've, you've, exactly. You've already it, proved it. Totally, totally. You've also said, which I find interesting, that you like to surround yourself with people that you think are more talented than you. Always. Right? People that are, Always. So that begs the question, why are you sitting with Stryker and I right now? <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want the real reason? Yeah, give it to us. <laughs> well, first of all, you guys are legends. I've listened to you guys <laughs> in LA for a, little, for, for a while. That's, that's for sure. Thanks, man. Second of all, if I come, I know we get more spins on the radio. So that's how this whole... Exactly you right. scratch my back, I scratch yours. And I feel like I made goes. a new friend right here. I feel like this is an I awesome I just signed vibe, a band. Man. I need radio play. This is a good thing. We're this here for it. I just bought his used van, so uh, we already got van deals on the side. It's great. This is actually the first, I think the first radio interview I've done in like 
in in like years. I don't. I don't. Come on. Yeah, I, I did one one interview with a guy named Rob Markman for the last album. Um, oh. Just kind of experimenting with seeing how far we can go with like no press, no social media presence for like just balancing my life and whatever. So this has been this is fun. This is this is new. Uh, awesome. I haven't done Thanks for picking us. We oh. appreciate it. Yeah. Always, bro. Always. John, early on when nobody knew who you were, and the goal is to get people out in the universe yeah. to give a damn about what you're doing. Of course, of course. How much frustration or no frustration did you have early on? I think, I think it was just blinders. I think it was just constantly like, don't even lift your head up to be angry at the fact that nobody knows. And then it's it's funny how life works. Once people start to know, then you start to realize that maybe everyone knowing and fame is maybe not even the goal anymore. Like a guy like Rick Rubin walks into a room and I'm sweating and Me crapping too. my pants and I'm like, wow, this is a legend. And my mom's like, who's Rick Rubin? But my mom knows who Justin Bieber is and Shawn Mendes is or whatever. If Andre 3000 walks in a room, I'm like, cast, yeah. oh my gosh, my parents might not know or Susie from Arkansas might not, 14 year old, whatever, yeah. who likes low, 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 might not know who those people are. So it's it's been a fun transition to kind of understand what my trajectory is and my balance is and my pace is. And having a fan base is what kind of gives me the ticket to kind of be like no to everybody in every capacity to be able to do it and find balance. So in the beginning it was, I got to get as big as I can. I don't want to go back to work anymore. But then now that I don't worry about having to go back to work anymore, what's going to keep me happy? What's going to keep me balanced spiritually, physically, mentally? And I think that's the new like frustration is, is what's the proper... How much press do you do? How much do you save for your family? How much do you, time do you save for yourself? How much do you give to the industry? How much do you hold on to mm-hmm. for yourself? So that's the new world that I'm in as far as as far as that whole thing goes. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, where's your home base? Is it Nashville, LA? Back I'll, in New York? I live area? in New York. Yeah, you I live, live in New York. York. Yeah. All right. How's the I? This is my hometown here. I've only been in New York like twice if it was oh, for wow. work. Mm-hmm. How's the creativity, uh, how does that help your creativity being there or do you take it from when you're out on the road? It helps a lot. I think LA, well, New York, and anybody would say this, is a barren wasteland as far as like the industry of writers and producers. Um, so LA is a fun time when, like we took six <laughs> months, I postponed the tour for six months just to come out here to write, to just nail a bunch of hits on as many artists as I can, work with the people I haven't gotten to work with. Um, because we, we actually, once I had a couple records that worked at radio for other artists, my artistry ended up taking off. So it's been a couple years since I was able to get back in the pipeline and like write and stuff. New York creatively is a little bit different because it's kind of like puts a chip on my shoulder. It's very like, mm. I don't know anybody. No one comes out here. I'm alone. I'm in the middle of like Glen Cove, New York, working on my album. It gives you a new fresh like, you don't want to sometimes fall into the LA trap of like, Everyone's working with everybody. Everything's kind of sounds sort of the same. So New York definitely gives me like a fresh, angry New Yorker vibe that I could be like, oh, I'm, I'm on my own thing. Nice. <laughs> nice. When you do get back to LA, though, you got any favorite favorite spots, meal that you have to get out here? Is there a restaurant you're oh, into? Oh, man. Um, I'm a big sushi guy. Sugarfish is. Okay. Eating alone <laughs> at Sugarfish is one of my favorite things Acceptable. in the world. <laughs> have Acceptable. you ever gone to a movie Acceptable. alone? Oh, yeah. Really? The, on tour, we'll be in the middle of. Nebraska or somewhere, I'll get a meal by myself, go to the movies by myself. It's it's phenomenal. It's uh, what are some of your favorite movies of all time? You're you're on the bus. What is what is your go to oh, to pass time? Wow, what a question. Uh, White Man Can't Jump is okay. probably one of my favorite movies. <laughs> nice. Um, I'd say a Bronx Tales, one of my favorite Ooh, movies. Nice. Um, Cologenal. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are probably my my top two. Go in the bathroom, you mush. <laughs> get out of here. You're bad luck. <laughs> Throw him in the bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> in the bathroom. All right, it. John, it has been so cool on our side to see people that may not have known you now yeah. gravitate towards you. It's incredible. Because you're hearing the, they're hearing the track you do with, with Illenium. And the platform you guys have provided for me, too. Like, we've, we've actually seen it on socials and seen it, like, the jump over from people who were being super accepting. Like, I was known as, like, a pop guy, but to get spun into, we, I think we just broke top 20, like, yes. four days ago on alternate right, in on general. Ready, so yeah. to see this, the spins move up and to see everything moving at at pace, but you guys jumping on board, like you said, even though it sounded a little different from your that's K Rock. That's, that's what we try to do. And the fact that you guys have balanced it properly and even gave me a shot, I'm so oh, I'm man. so blessed. Well, man. you've really done all you. the work. We can't thank you enough for being here. Congrats on everything that you have done. You built it, man. Yeah, man. Thank you. You got it. I appreciate it. Thank you right. for Klein, John Bellion. I'm Striker. Find the man on the road. Check out his music, and we will see you guys later. It's K Rock. <laughs>